just crossed what you're witnessing here, the death throes of the gate project. We managed to get the wires around this post and so what we're doing this morning is trying to get the gate up, which is started by pushing on into the post the thing the gate will sit on. Then there's another little um, device that, the, that sits on the gate to also attach it to the post. And then there's a sort of latch thing which goes on this post to keep the gate shut. You can see the gate on this end is going to be sitting quite high off the ground. But as I've mentioned before, we're not putting up this gate to keep in or keep out animals. It's entirely to allow vehicles in and out. So the fact there's a gap here for animals to get under is not a concern of mine. A slight concern in terms of the strain it might be pushing on this post, but that's why it's quite a big post. So fingers crossed, it'll open okay. And um, you can see just the um, the slope we're on, which is why that it it has to be quite high. Obviously, it's lower that end, and that's just to say that the gate actually will open. Fingers crossed the next time I catch up with you regarding this project, it'll be finished. The gate is done. I will show you that later. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and what we're having to do now this weekend was to amend our plans. I, we were going to be working on the wood store, but we currently have two ride on those that are out of action. So we're biting the bullet and turning our attention to these. This one, you may remember, I was mowing along and something caught one of the mower blades, but unfortunately on this occasion it ripped it out and irrevocably damaged the deck that the blade's attached to. So we bought a new one along with some new blades and what we're going to see if we can do now is replace the old one with this new one and then this will be functioning again and then yesterday I was mowing the lawns and first of all the guide wheel which normally sits here on the cutting deck the companion to this one fell off and then in the process, you can probably see this bit of metal got all mangled. And in theory, that should attach there. So you can see that uh, that went wrong. So fingers crossed, this one will be a slightly easier fix. What we'll need to do is detach the cutting deck and move it out. And then weld these pieces back together again. This one might be a bit trickier. What we're going to try and do is flip it onto its side. We're not entirely sure how easy it's going to be to take the original deck, um, cutting disc off because it looks like it's pretty gummed up with rope and who knows what else. And also I know for a fact that we are missing a few components for this job because they didn't have them in stock. But the reason we're doing it today is because Will's going into town to do his radio show later. So anything we are missing, hopefully, if we need to, we can pick up from the shop and we can finish this tomorrow. And then we need to deal with the battery because the battery seems to be flat now too. So busy weekend of trying to get both our mows up and running because we just can't afford to not be able to mow the lawns at this time of year. Change of plans on this project. We opened up the new year. And notice that there are actually four holes and so it's the case on the original so rather than replacing it for the time being say if the blades are on those holes and um, that hole's broken we're just switching them to these two holes and then if and when one of those breaks we've got a spare to try and replace it but for the time being we're doing the thing that's fastest and simplest which is to just use the new holes, remove that and then tidy this up a bit and hopefully 
get the battery up and running and this will be good to go again. We removed the cutting deck off of the John Deere since this is the situation we're in. You can see better how it's missing a wheel and how this whole section has become buckled and bowed and also detached. So what we want to try and do is get this as neat as we can and then reattach the wheel which should go here but you can possibly see just how out of shape that is. It would be possible to buy a whole new deck but I don't know how much that would cost but at least for the time being we're going to try and repair this one. Both mares back where they belong, both to the best of our knowledge fixed as best as it's in our power to fix them. You'll have seen Will doing a bit of welding. So he welded that together, welded a bit of a crack at the front and welded the front wheel back on. And then as you can as you would have seen we also fixed the blades on here. This still makes that horrible grinding noise when the blades are spinning, so this isn't my preference. Um, but it's good to have a backup because this one's been out of action twice now in the past two weeks. First when the drive belt snapped and then when the wheel came off and the rim warped. So it would have been handy to have had a backup. I limped on with this one but it wasn't my preference. And this is our gate. Yes, it is a bit eccentric, but it's important that the gate can open. So, basic open and closing mechanism here. And then opens inwards to allow vehicles in and out, primarily intended for emergency situations only. We don't envisage choosing to leave or enter our property this way normally. If I go into the state forest fire break, this is how it looks from the state forest side. And here's my sign, which is my largely my contribution to this project um, but uh, I'm quite pleased with that. The fence restored after it was snapped to make way for the gate. Gate in situ and it opens nicely so can't ask for more than that. just back from helping Will drop his car off at the garage. They don't provide a lone vehicle so I had to drive him back to work and now that I'm home I'm spending a bit of the morning doing some pruning work. What that's involved so far is in the donut bed we have a plant which I grew from seed called bee sage or holy sage something like that and it had flowered and the flowers had sort of gone over and it was looking very scruffy so I tidied that up. I gave the rosemary hedge a bit of a prune because I want it to sort of spur off and bush out rather than grow up. I have given some of the citrus trees a prune, so the lime there, a little tip prune it's called. Um, the same with the lemon and the same with the orange. Basically, I'm focusing so far on the pruning I can do stood on the ground. And then later I'll get up on the ladder and shape these taller ones. And what I'm turning my attention to now is the bay, which I have been training into a pyramid. But as you might be able to see, it's starting to get unruly as is its want. It's a sug of a plant and to think that when I lived in Scotland I really struggled to grow bay in a pot indoors 
um but yeah here i can barely keep on top of it so again i think what i'll do i'll do just a little bit of the pruning that i can do stood on the ground which is actually not so bad it sort of starts to go a bit bushy once it's up in the air <laughs> but i can actually access this quite easily from the roof so i think i might do that uh and then probably once I've done the stuff I can reach on the ground, it'll be time for lunch, so I'll stop for some lunch and then I'll do the ladder pruning after lunch and then I'll go and collect Will. So quite a nice little morning uh, ahead of me and quite a pleasant little afternoon too. Here we go. If you can see the difference. Actually, it didn't take as long as I thought, so I haven't stopped for lunch yet. I was able to get that done was sort of mostly shaggy here and I had sort of two competing bits coming out of the top so I've reduced that to one and I've shortened it. It is a bit shaggy there but I think I might leave that because sort of from a distance I wouldn't mind if the top sort of filled out a bit and it'll help that. It is a very very mm, minimal uh, difference pyramid shape but some <laughs> almost more of a column but nevertheless it has got some sort of shape a bit restricted because of the house and stuff and uh, I didn't want to chop it too short anyway that's that and now I am going to stop for lunch and then, although I won't film it, I'll just reiterate, I will be up the ladder pruning the top of these two citrus trees. And it'll probably be time to go and collect Will from work. You may remember quite a long time ago, I spoke about some of the difficulties I faced most of my adult life with getting good quality sleep. I can pretty much fall asleep within about three seconds of going to bed, but I have struggled in the past with staying asleep. And I've tried all sorts of things, but it's got a lot better recently, and that could be for a number of factors. It could be diet related. But one thing I'm trying that I thought I'd just quickly share with you is a few different types of light bulbs and products around the house. So it's uh, early in the morning here currently, and um, I've got this light bulb here, which I'm sure, I hope you can see. If I turn it off and turn it on again, it goes, the light goes much more orange. And then if I turn it off and turn it on again, it goes even more orange. And then if I turn it off and turn it on again, I get this whiter light. This is from a company called Block Blue Light. So that's the thing I'm trying here in the bathroom. To be fair, this was a much smaller when it arrived than I thought it was going to be. But uh, we've also got this little light here, which kind of mimics what it would be like if you had a few candles on. So it's enough to see by, but uh, you probably couldn't do your makeup by it or whatever. <laughs> I don't think it'll be okay for us. And the last thing I want to show you is upstairs. And my uh, reading lamp is got an out and out red LED light bulb. Now I can't really vouch whether this is scientifically rigorous or not, but the theory is that being overstimulated by blue light at night time affects our ability to naturally uh, fall asleep and stay asleep because our body's getting the signal that it's still daylight which is contrary to how we've lived as humans for the vast majority of human history now uh, the ability to have electric light and computers on <laughs> right up until you go to bed is a relatively new phenomenon so i decided to try these and whether or not this is the thing that's making a difference, I actually quite like it. So I think I'm also going to get another one of those changing colour light bulbs for the standard lamp by the sofa. It's got three different colour settings that so it's got sort of 
early morning wake you up light which is the, the whiter of the lights and then it's got a sort of afternoon dusky light which is slightly more orange and then it's got proper nighttime light which is a uh, pretty orange and the way you switch between it as you see is just turning the light switch on and off on and off on and off this one is just red it's just out and out red all the time and the little um lamp which is charged by usb uh, is orange all the time so the idea there is that in the bathroom we'll put the normal light on in the morning and then come the evening if we need to go in there we'll switch over to the orange light anyway we're really enjoying it will will's very keen on this um so i thought i'd share that with you in case sleep was something that you struggled with um maybe you could consider switching to a sort of light bulb situation either by your bed or in the room you spend your time in before you go to bed one of these light bulbs or lamps which um, don't include blue light in the spectrum because it seems to be working for me